All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again, time for IT Pro TV. And in this episode, we're continuing on with CompTIA IT Fundamentals. I'm your host, Don Pazette. In this particular episode, we're going to be moving into a special range of peripherals that we didn't talk about previously. These are display devices. Kind of important that we be able to see what our computer is doing. That's what we're going to be working <laughs> We're going to see that right here in this episode. <laughs> I'm going to work on all my display puns for this one. Uh, but here in the studio to try and keep us pun free uh -huh. is Mr. Ronnie Wong. Ronnie, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Don, for having me back as we continue to, to take a look into the world of displays uh, once again. Apparently, you don't like my pun. So there we go. <laughs> all right. So here, we're here to talk about, of course, different display devices that uh, you are going to, of course, see, use, and uh, you know have to deal with if you're working in the IT world in terms of hardware. And the reason why this is important is everybody wants, of course, want their monitors to work uh, the way they want to. And you have to realize what types of devices are out there. Also, how those devices will connect to the computer as well. And then what gives you the best uh, display that you need. So sometimes you'll end up seeing that where it's like, all right, I have this nice, beautiful monitor, but I'm only using, let's say, two thirds of the screen. It's not showing up the way that you want to, or things are looking blurry, or they're looking fuzzy, whatever it might be you got to at least know what the basics are on the displays in terms of the connectors and the types of, of displays you're likely to see. And of course, well, what are the standards that are out there that you're going to end up using? So that's what we're going to take a look at. All right. So you mentioned standards and today right. we, we're kind of spoiled, right? Because monitors and displays are really, really nice and, and they usually come built in or you buy a computer as a package and it comes with it. So we don't think about it. Right. And when we think of displays, I think about like my laptop where if I hold it sideways, I mean, it is super thin, thin right? Uh, and it's a high quality, high visibility screen. It's really impressive, but that's not <laughs> how it all was. So yeah. let's, let's travel back in history a little all bit, right. Ronnie, and, and talk about how computer monitors were originally so we can see where we are now. Yeah, when, when we start thinking about it, right, because we are so spoiled, it's hard to, to kind of relate back to the days when you not only had a computer, but you had a separate monitor that weighed, uh, I'm going to say, of uh, at least twice the weight of the computer itself at times. <laughs> and these are what we call CRT monitors or cathode ray tube monitors. And these devices were analogous to our TV sets that we used to have. Now, if you're going, wait, my TV set's pretty thin, Ronnie. Well, this is way back probably in the days when, when your parents had TVs as they were growing up, this type of television set and those displays were not as bright as, as crisp at times as what we get to see now, nor as detailed as what we see now as well. Now, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about so that you can take a look here uh, too. So here's an example of a typical, oh, I say a typical, relatively new uh, type of CRT monitor. And the reason why you're saying, well, how do you know that this is relatively new? Well, first it has color, okay? <laughs> On the actual screen itself, it has color. The original ones essentially were what we call monochrome monitors. They could only display black or white and heck, the majority of the time just text itself. So I can see icons, I can see pictures in the background. And so this is actually a fairly relatively new monitor uh, itself too. Now, so we have this nice uh, glass pane in the front and you have some buttons that you can adjust the brightness and all the other details that you end up seeing. But Don, this thing in the back over here, okay, that's it's probably the thing huge. that will, yeah, will confuse people. Yeah, cathode ray tubes, you know, they basically had a, it's effectively a ray gun, right? right? <laughs> you know, it's shooting electrons at that screen. And in order to do that, it had to have distance and it had to have a lead screen to shoot against so that it would turn into the various colors that we see and come up. That made these things heavy. It made them toxic, right? right? The lead, you're not supposed to throw that in the trash. This is one of the first major forms of <laughs> e-waste that we had. Uh, they were big and heavy. They weren't pleasant, but they were all you had. In right. the 1980s and the 1990s, these are what were being used. Now, if you walk into an office and you see CCRTs like this, that's a problem, right? That's not good. You shouldn't be using those. In the 80s and 90s, that was normal. But starting in the 2000s, things changed. We got all new technologies and this went away. But you still see the ripples of it, the effects mm -hmm. that are out there. You'll find people who have computer desks that are really, really deep. And the reason they're so deep is they were making room to have these giant monitors and you still had room for your keyboard and mouse to go in front of it. Now, we don't have that problem anymore, do we, Ron? No, yeah, because we've actually moved to the realm of what we call flat panel displays or LCD displays, they've become a lot thinner. They've removed essentially the back end of this because we no longer need a ray gun 
to shoot the information against a screen in the front, we now have liquid crystal displays that now use electronics and some different layering technology that allows for those images to be generated and created in doing this. Now, uh, the other thing, Don, because uh, I, I don't know why, this always reminds me of something that you told me at one time, that when classrooms were really cold, when you and I used to <laughs> teach in these, that you would actually stand behind the computers and put your hands on the back of this to warm your hands up. Is that right? I, I would yeah. teach. I would teach in some pretty cold classrooms, <laughs> and you know, when you had every student as a monitor in front of them, it was kind of you could walk up and they, they would think you were just trying to be closer to them, but yeah. warm up your hands. Uh, and and that that's a problem yeah. in and of itself too. Right. Generating heat. Heat is is an inefficient use of electricity. It's when electricity mm -hmm. escapes. So there's a lot of bad things about these monitors, and you might you might be wondering. Why is Ronnie just showing you a picture of a CRT? Like, we haven't had a CRT in this building in... Ever. Ever, yeah. right? <laughs> Even in our last building, I don't think we had any. It's, it's been a solid decade Easily. since I've had to touch a CRT. But now, Ronnie, you mentioned right. liquid crystal displays. I, I, don't, I don't have to travel very far at all. I mean, right. well, there's, there's one built into my laptop. But even for separate ones that are attached to computers, we've got those all over the place. In fact, I've got one off camera. Right. Let, me, let me grab it and I'll set it on the podium. All right. So let me try and explain this idea of this uh, liquid crystal display to you just a little bit as we uh, get started, too. Okay. So when we start talking about this idea of using that, that flat panel monitor, this is more likely and more typical what you see. It doesn't generate as much heat for us. Uh, for uh, you know what we actually are going to use. It allows us to be able to connect and they're relatively lightweight. The footprint is much smaller in what we tend to see and it gives us this ability to have a fairly decent and crisp picture uh, without wasting that amount of space and even the weight and the heat. So it does help us out when we start to, to take a look at, at what we have. Okay, So if we now take a kind of a double shot here, here's just a regular <laughs> example of, of one. And now we have this one. I think this is like a 22 or 24 inch uh, screen, or I, I think it, this is a 24 inch. Okay. And and this this monitor itself is actually it's a, it's a little bit old. I right. think it's maybe four years old. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's not even the most advanced one right. that you can have. If I turn it sideways, though, this is where you're going to see the big difference between it yeah. and a CRT, right? Is that that is significantly thinner than what we were showing in the pictures even even just a moment ago. If I get it in front of the brick wall, you'll see there. Uh, this monitor is probably, what do you think it is, three, like three inches, probably. maybe four yeah. inches wide. Very, very thin, right? And it does have little vents across the top for heat to escape, but it doesn't generate much heat mm -hmm. at all. And so as far as just raw disk space, you could have a monitor like this on your desk and easily have a keyboard and mouse in front of it. In fact, if you're watching the show, you might well have something like this in front of you right now. Or you can take the stand off and mount it on the wall. You certainly couldn't do that with CRTs. I remember seeing some of the crazy mounts people would build for CRTs. These, you can pop them right on the simple, you can pay 40 bucks for a mount at Best right. Buy and stick this on a wall and, and now you've got a, a display on, on display. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really nice, right? The very fact is that it makes it easy and then also easy to move. Uh, at those one points in those big offices where they'd constantly move people and computers from one office to another one, you can imagine how much easier just something like this made compared to the other one. And not only do we see single monitors like this, a lot of times you see where they're dual monitors, where they're actually working with the double monitor size to be able to do that as well. And they, they do, they, they become much more productive because they can put everything in front of the screen that they actually need to. It works very well in, in what we actually need. Now, when we start working with these, you might be wondering like, well, Ronnie, you have a laptop. Why do I actually need an LCD monitor as well if I've got my laptop right here? Well, mine's, I think it's 13. I think 13, ours is 13. 12.9 okay. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 12.9, 13 inch. That works, except that it's really tiny by comparison. If I sit down at a desk and I want to relax a little bit and work, I'd really have to focus in on my laptop. So I can also essentially plug a cable in from my laptop to this and extend the desktop, which is nice and that ability to do so, it allows me to have a bigger screen if I just wanted to duplicate the desktop. I now look at it as a regular size monitor instead of this 12.9, uh, 13 inch monitor. I can look at it as a 24 inch monitor instead and that makes it nice and big and, and kind of relaxing to work with. So let's talk about that plug-in, okay. right? So this monitor, uh, we specifically right. chose it for the show because it's about four years old, so it should be pretty standard mm -hmm. for what you encounter out there businesses in the real world are never on the cutting edge technology. So if we take a look at this one, it has a handful of connectors buried on the bottom of it. And you'll see those kind of arranged over here. And 
each one of those connectors is designed to make it easier to plug right. into your computer. Now, when I glance at those, I don't see the same connectors that I see on your laptop, right. Ronnie. So what what are some of the different methods we would connect to a monitor like this? Yeah, so if you don't have the same physical connectors, such as my USB-C cable, you're going to either need a cable or you're going to need some type of adapter to connect in. And that's where you have to pay attention to these types of connectors that are available to you because there's a lot of different ones that are out there. The oldest one by far is the one that you see in blue over there. Uh, is what you actually end up seeing. And that is a cable that would look like this. Now, even if I had something like this, well, if I don't have one of these on my end, on my computer, it means I'm gonna need another adapter to help me to connect that in. So I would need to look for another piece, such as something, uh, oh, I thought I had one, okay. Something like this that will also allow me to connect in, if I can actually see how that works here, okay, to adapt and make that also work. Now, whenever you start adding in additional connections, you might lose a little bit of the quality in terms of what you're sending out, but it allows you to do that. Now, on my computer, this is going the opposite way. I just went from a smaller to something that's actually bigger in that sense to do so. But you can kind of see why this is actually a combination of things uh, that you have. But this type of connector used to be ubiquitous just about everywhere up until about 10 years ago, maybe? I don't even know if it's been, I think yeah, it's been it's 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years ago, you'd still see this type of, of connector. It's called VGA is what this one is called. Uh, video graphics array uh, type of cable. Uh, had a few pins in it by comparison. Didn't show you as much quality and detail, but it did give you at least the image that you would normally see. Yeah, and VGA was designed as an analog video technology. So this is kind of like um, when, when TVs used to be a little more square, right? They were four by three instead of the 16 by nine that we have now. Well. As we transition into newer technologies, we wanted HD video, higher resolution, those older cables didn't work out so well. So on modern monitors, monitors that you're buying today, not the ones from four and five years ago, they were switching to different connectors. And actually this, this monitor was a little bit progressive, mm -hmm. I guess, because it's got VGA on it. It has DVI, those are the older technologies, right. but it also has HDMI, right? And HDMI is the technology that you use on your television. Mm -hmm. If you have a uh, 1080p or a 4K TV, the odds are you're using an HDMI cable, which carries not just video, but Same. audio as yep. well. So very, very powerful. It really is. It allows us to do a lot more because it does carry both of those signals for us. And a lot of the laptops and even computers today, or your desktop computers, will have this type of connector because they're expecting you to go from a relatively small screen. Now today, relatively small is really unusual here to something that might be as big as a regular TV that you would put on your wall uh, to be able to do so. So like, for example, at my, we have an old 50 inch uh, plasma screen TV that we're using, but it has an HDMI connector and I can plug this into a, a computer and play a movie on it. And it actually expands out from that 19 or 20 inch monitor that I had on that desktop to that 50 inch TV. And this allows us to be able to make sure that we get the best use out of both possibilities there. So on those monitors, when you do end up buying them, you've got to make sure that you at least have the right connectors or you have an adapter to be able to connect that particular monitor back down to the computer that you need so it can display the information that you need on it. But that's kind of the, a key uh, that, that you'll also end up seeing there too, okay? Now, once we get to, to that point, right, uh, these monitors, you also start talking about uh, what uh, the different sizes of monitors that are there and also those different connectors. So on that one that you saw where it had uh, the VGA and DVI connectors uh, and that HDMI, well, that's not the only connectors that are actually out there and available for you. It just depends on whatever other standard that, that you have. And the newer ones go ex insanely uh, uh, much further in terms of what you can deliver to. Wait, Ronnie, let's, I'll swap this one out. Right, so sure. this monitor, like, like I said, was uh, about four years old. Mm -hmm. So definitely not uh, something that's the latest and greatest. Perfectly good monitor right. though, right? It, uh, I think it is a 1920 by 1080, so it'll do HD video and, uh, and looks pretty good. But today, there's all sorts of other trends adding different mm -hmm. features that are much larger, right. sharper picture, 4K. This, 4K. this won't do 4K. Uh, and other fancy bells and whistles, right? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt that when we start to take a look at the newer monitors, they have additional uh, properties like what Don was mentioning. The ability to, of course, go from the idea of, uh, you know, uh, just 19, uh, that 1920 by 1080 here. Uh, and uh, Don, I think you've just overwhelmed us here, okay? Uh, to something like this, okay? Now, the original one that we just showed you was a flat panel monitor. Now, Don, uh, let me see if I can, 
kind of uh, now if we start to squirrel this around Here, a little bit. If I get bit, the studio lights yeah. to hit it just right, you can start yeah. to see that this is a curved, curved monitor. monitor. Yeah. Oop. So this is kind of the newer standard here where you start seeing where it actually has a, a kind of a curve edge to it, as you see, and it's much wider. Don, this is no longer 16 by nine, I'm gonna say. Uh, this one, the aspect ratio is a lot uh, wider. I don't, do you know what, what this one actually is? You know, is? I actually don't know what the resolution, <laughs> I mean the, uh, the- Aspect ratio, yeah. yeah. The, this one, it's certainly wider. Yeah, it's, uh, and you'll see variations yeah. like that where some are 16 by 10 yeah. or even other like 29 right. by, by 10. So it could be anything. Your computer is designed to be able to recognize the different resolutions and see that as long as you can connect into it, right? Mm -hmm. But these monitors, they don't necessarily know what you've got on your end and they want to give you that flexibility. So they give you a lot of different connectors to be able to use. Right. The size doesn't, <laughs> not, not to sound too cliche here, but the, the size doesn't necessarily oh. matter, right? It's how you connect and what resolution you right. set on your computer, which is largely automatically detected. Right. So the great thing is it works just like some of the peripheral devices that we've been talking about already. The very fact is when we get a monitor like this, if our computers are designed to support the resolution, we automatically just plug in and now you can see on the back of this one, Don, there's what? It looks like eight different connector ports that are back, or six or, yeah, it looks almost like eight different connector ports that are back there that range anywhere between the, uh, I think that's uh, HDMI yeah, there's, to USB or? There's actually uh, two HDMI ports okay. on it. There's DisplayPort, there's USB-C, and there's a couple other little proprietary connectors that are on there, all designed to give you, well, one, flexibility, depending on what right. you want to plug in, what cables you can find. Right. But also, you might want to attach more than one device to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have your, your laptop and something else. Because you know, these can be used as like regular TV monitors. They can be used for video game consoles where you might plug something directly in. So it's all about flexibility. This one has a USB hub built into it as well, oh, which you'll nice. see sometimes. So you might notice there's a couple of USB ports off to the side. Oh, yeah. So if I, if I have a webcam that I'm going to stick up here, but the computer is way under the, under the table, well, I can hook the monitor up, and the webcam can plug into one of those ports, which we, we have a webcam here, don't we? Yep. So uh, in our, our peripheral episode, we talked about webcams and how you, know, you might want to add one. So if I'm adding one to my monitor like that, right, I've got to plug it in somewhere. Mm -hmm. Having those extra ports on the back gives me that flexibility. Yeah, it's really nice because of that flexibility, and now everything's there instead of having that big bird's nest of cables that we normally have that's all kind of jammed underneath the computer. You can eliminate some, not a lot, but you can eliminate <laughs> some of it right here and have it all nice and tucked in as well. But this one, as I look at it, I, if I split it down the middle, I think that's actually like two 16 by nine, just about. So this is a pretty wide monitor and it is nice. It, it allows you once again to, instead of having two separate monitors, it's about equal to the size of two separate monitors, but as one big monitor to work with too. So we're seeing more and more of this because it does lend to that idea of productivity in the workplace. It gives us that ability to see everything that we need to in a nice, crisp, and clean image. As long as your computer has that function to be able to, to show the image the way that it needs to. Now, Don, that's something else we need to talk about just briefly. The very fact is sometimes the computers will have their, their video kind of limited by what they can actually push out and display. So even on a nice, crisp, and brand spanking new monitor like this, we might see things that get a little bit fuzzy or they're not as clean and detailed as we want. So that's where you might have to depend then on other hardware that will help boost that and make it a nicer, a nicer and crisper picture for you. Absolutely, and you, we're really bumping into this with 4K, right? With you, if you have a 4K monitor, that, that sounds really impressive. Hey, my monitor can do 4K, this, this monitor can do 4K. But your laptop or your desktop might not be able to. When you plug in, you're plugging into a graphics card of some sort. If your graphics card is mostly software driven, like it is in most laptops, it might not be able to drive a 4K screen. A 4K screen is like driving four <laughs> 1080p screens. Right. That's a lot of work. And most of those older computers have only been designed to drive two 1080p screens, not four. So they just don't have the capacity to be able to do it. Now you might add in additional hardware, and I'm gonna get this giant monitor out of the way, <laughs> but if you add in additional hardware to your computer, you might be able to drive way, I mean, you can do eight monitors, 16 monitors, you can go crazy, but it does all become dependent on the graphics hardware in your system. Yeah. When we start talking about the idea of the graphics hardware that uh, we need to add into the system, it might come down to what we call, of course, uh, the idea of a GPU, right? A graphics processing unit. And that is when we choose to offload some of the additional processing that we need to display those graphics 
to display more of them, to display deeper shades, whatever you want to call it, right? In the image the way that want to by offloading that to another board. And here's an example of one that I have right here. And it has its own circuit board on the back. And there's of course a processing unit. Uh, and if I hold it this way, you can see those tubes that you see there, that's a heat sink. Uh, for for all of the you know stuff that it has to process because it generates so much heat and additionally well two fans to cool this thing down okay so we plug this into the computer's motherboard and now when we do graphics processing to give us that better enhanced image it takes it it processes it and then off the back of the computer we can now actually have these different plugs here okay that will allow us and we have these two DVI plugs uh, ports here that I see and then two uh, actually one uh, is uh, another port that we really, we kind of mentioned, but we didn't talk about. This one, it almost looks like an HDMI port, but it's not. This is a, a display port, and this one is an HDMI port. So you'll see some that are a little bit different configuration that's out there for you, but this one will allow you to do that. It'll allow you to actually have multiple monitors plugged in. So the idea of four monitors being plugged in this, it is possible for this to generate that and display everything that it needs to. So a fairly powerful type of one that you see. Now, it doesn't mean you always have to buy one of these. Don't get me wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of different manufacturers out there. It depends on what you need. If you're a, someone that likes gaming, you're probably gonna put more money into it. If you're like me and free sell is the extent of your gaming ability, probably not gonna help so much, I, I would assume, uh, overall. But uh, you can see why this would be something that's worth it if you're really going to be heading towards saying, hey, I want to do a lot more of that graphics processing that I need to. So all this will help you to actually also choose what type of monitor, whether they have these types of ports that are available for the graphics card that you want so that you can directly plug into them and make it work the way too. Yep. And when you've got a card like this where you have a choice of connectors, the connector actually does matter which right. one you pick, right? So uh, there's a little bit of history to these. VGA was analog, and that means that the picture quality is not going to be that great. You can only drive an analog signal so far. Uh, if you switch to digital, which is, you know, ones and zeros communicating, it's a nice, sharp, crisp right. image. So digital is what we want. Well, VGA was the original connector. DVI came second, and that was designed to do analog and digital. It could do either one, and when it was in a digital mode, things looked a lot nicer. Well, DisplayPort was supposed to be the replacement for that, but DisplayPort came around and started became, becoming popular around the same time as HDMI. HDMI is digital as well, but it also carries audio. And in the TV world, like in the in your in your living room, that was really nice. Just to be able to run one cable and get video and audio. And it didn't take long for that to move over to the computer world also. So DisplayPort is digital video. It looks really good, but by and large has been beaten out by HDMI. Now there are exceptions to that, like when you're driving video over Thunderbolt connectors or if you're doing more than one monitor attached to a single port on a computer display port can really kick in there so you'll see it on laptops a lot but most desktops don't have display port most monitors that you buy don't have display port connectors on them these days they have hdmi connectors now obviously it's, it's limited by how much money you spend the right. more money you spend the more connectors you get uh, the more options you have but if you have to choose a cable the hdmi cable is usually going to be the one that's the most supported and will give you the best video if you're driving a single monitor if you're driving more than one monitor, though, you'll want to go DisplayPort. And if you go DisplayPort, you'll want to remember that it doesn't carry audio. So you'll have to get audio to your speakers some other way. Uh, it means running additional cable. DVI and VGA, those are older technologies. And I, I don't want to say you'll never use them because Lord only knows every time I go somewhere <laughs> yeah. to give a presentation and I want to hook up my VGA laptop, <laughs> they've got some ancient projector that only does VGA. And, and so... We have a collection of dongles and adapters and cables like, like what Ronnie was showing a moment ago so that we can plug a modern computer into this older hardware. The older hardware, it's it's still out there and it's not even that old. Right. People are just trying to get their money's worth. But HDMI is pretty much the standard connector that's out there. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that uh, more than likely what we'll see in the future is just that, is HDMI will probably end up uh, taking over in, in the world because everybody likes the idea of going to that one cable, okay? So we don't end up with the bird's nest of cables that we have. So the use of this is not only extending into, the, like you said, audio and sound, but I've even seen HDI cables, Don, that can carry even network signals over them too. So for those devices in which we're sending, like, uh, you know, our, our, or having those devices on our network, uh, smart TVs and stuff, it's also helpful as well. Yeah, and the, the technology they're working on that's not done yet is being able to drive power over right. it too. So now you really do just have one cable. 
The problem is power creates <laughs> interference. And with video, we worry about quality. We want things to look as good as possible. So power is typically separate. So on a modern display, you're usually running an HDMI cable and power. Right. Or you're running DisplayPort and power and potentially an audio cable in that scenario. Don, I'm glad you mentioned power. The, the very fact is that's the only cable we didn't mention when we talked about all these display devices that, that we've been talking about, that we do have to run power also to these. And it's not that you didn't know that, but if we just didn't mention it, you might go, all right, are we getting power through this? So just realize that you'll also, of course, have to run power to make sure that these things are up and running, but they don't tend to require any extra power. Most of them today will actually take less power than the original CRT monitors ever took up. So you can have much bigger and much more clear displays without using as much power as we once did with our old CRT monitors as well, okay? So we save weight, we save heat, uh, you know, we, we have better quality video than we've ever had before, especially with these graphics uh, uh, GPUs uh, just coming prolific everywhere that you actually tend to see them. It really is enhancing the way that we do computers. And this is one of the most important ones that you wanna pick. Don, if there's a place that I don't wanna skip money if I'm doing computing, it's going to be the display because I know if there's anything that's going to show me right away whether I, I'm, I'm going to be happy with it or not, it's going to be my display. And I'd hate to go, all right, I saved $100 here, but I really hate this one thing that it doesn't do. That becomes driving you, know, driving you mad at points. So I would make sure that I take the time, pick the right one that you want, and with all the features that you want to if you can afford it. Yeah, and you know, we focused on cables and connectors in this episode, getting the things hooked right. up. But there are other factors you want to keep in mind. Things like the brightness right. of the monitor, the way that it's lit. There's the contrast, which is how dark the blacks can get. Mm -hmm. when, it, If you think about it, a monitor works with light. So it's throwing light at a screen or mm -hmm. setting off an LED, uh, a light-emitting diode. Well, can you make a light that's black? You can't, right? Or at least yeah. not, not that I'm aware of. So how do they make black show up on the screen? As a color, it's very difficult to render. So some monitors do a better job than others. And there's some monitors like um, Apple does their retina displays, which is, is just marketing jargon, but they are <laughs> really good looking monitors. Uh, LG, like that LG display that I brought up uh, a moment ago, that one's incredibly expensive and things look really good mm -hmm. on it. But most of the cost on that one is not making it look great, it's making it work while still bent, right? right. While curved. If you get rid of the curve, you can usually get a higher quality picture for way less money. So it's up to you to kind of make that decision but if you're just given a monitor to set up, like you're, you're an IT support person, you need to get a system connected, really all you are worrying about is that cable. There's no drivers or software we need to load. Systems are automatically detected. You might need to adjust resolution, but by and large, you plug in, the monitor works, and off you go. All right, Don. Well, you know, as we start taking a look at it, right, there's actually going to be, of course, uh, our idea here of these displays. But we also need to talk about hardware, but we'll probably end up saving that for another show because there's actually additional hardware we need to uh, cover. But Don, as far as displays go, I think we're actually uh, at a good point. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't even think about it until you just said it, Ronnie, but when we talked about like that GPU, yeah. that big graphics card, a lot of times that's built into your motherboard. And so we, we talked about motherboards in a, another episode, uh, definitely kind of overlaps here. But that graphics card is important, the display is important, the cables, all three of them, if they work together, you get your display and everything's right. great. All right, well, Ronnie, thank you for walking us through all of that. Hopefully you guys out there enjoyed it. We uh, we went on our, our visual <laughs> tour of monitor history, uh, as we saw from the old all the way to the new, uh, and what that is going to look like. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, though, because we have more CompTIA IT fundamentals coming up. But for now, signing off for IT Pro TV. I've been Don Pazette. And I'm Ronnie Wong. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.